We are dealing with the block cipher modes of operation. In the last presentation, we have seen about the electronic code book mode of operation. In this presentation, we will work on the cipher block chaining simply called as CBC. Let's visit the outcomes first. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one. Recall the security deficiencies of ECB. Outcome number two, we will understand the operation of CBC. And outcome number three, we will understand the pros and cons of CBC. We know basically there are five modes of operations in block cipher. Number one, the electronic code book ECB. Number two, the cipher block chaining CBC. Number three, the cipher feedback mode CFB. Number four, the output feedback mode OFB. And number five, the counter mode. We are now focusing on the second mode of operation, the cipher block chaining. Let's see the theoretical aspects of CBC. So CBC stands for cipher block chaining. In the previous technique, that is in the electronic code book, we know that same plain text block results in the same cipher text block. I mean the plain text in block one and plain text in block n are one and the same. Then obviously their cipher text will also be one and the same. So it obviously gives some clue for the attacker. So it's clear that ECB produces same cipher text for the same plain text blocks. But here in CBC, for the same plain text block, we will be getting different cipher text block. How is that possible? Are we going to change the key? No, we are not going to change the key. The same key is used for the entire encryption process, even in CBC. Then how it is actually happening? Different cipher texts are generated because we are introducing a concept called chaining. So we are going to link the blocks. So when we bring in chaining, obviously we will be having dependent blocks. In the previous technique, which is ECB, we had independent blocks, whereas here we will be having dependent blocks. Since the blocks are dependent, these repeating patterns of bits are not exposed. So this CBC can be used for general purpose block oriented transmissions. See, nowadays this CBC is rarely used, but once upon a time, the CBC was widely used. You know why it is not widely used nowadays? Because it is having some security issues. Anyway, we will see about that in the pros and cons section. Before seeing the operation of CBC, let's quickly see the operation of ECB. In ECB, we can see here all the blocks are independent blocks. So there is no relationship between any block. Whereas in CBC, we are going to have dependent blocks. So if you see here, we are bringing in the concept of chaining. So where you can see that the blocks are chained. Can you see here the blocks are chained? I will just explain the process here. In ECB, that is in the electronic code book, the plain text is actually given to the encryption function or the encryption algorithm by giving the key as well, then it will produce the cipher text. Now other block will be given to the encryption function and the key is provided, it gives the other cipher text. But here in CBC, what we are going to do is the cipher text of the previous block is acting as the input for generating the next cipher text. For generating C2, we need C1 which is acting as an input here. Can you see here, before giving it to the encryption algorithm, the current block plain text is actually XORed with the previous block cipher text. So whatever the bits we get, those bits is XORed with the plain text bits and whatever we get, that result is given to the encryption function by providing the key and the cipher text is generated. So for generating C3, C2 will be acting as an input here. So P3 is XORed with C2, then it is given to the encryption algorithm with key, then C3 is generated. From this, it's clear that for generating the cipher text of the current block, we need the cipher text of the previous block. The cipher text of the previous block is not directly given to the encryption algorithm. Rather, the cipher text of the previous block is exhort with the current plain text block. From this, it's clear that for generating the cipher text of the current block, we need the previous block cipher text. Now, what will be the input for generating the first cipher text block? Can you see here, we are introducing one thing new here, which is the initialization vector. Say for P2, C1 can be given. For P3, C2 can be given. So for Pn, Cn minus 1 can be given. For P1, we are using initialization vector, which is known to both sender and the receiver. So this initialization vector is acting as an input for the first block's encryption. So this is about the CBC encryption and coming to the decryption, it's just reversed. The arrow points like this in encryption and in decryption, the arrow points like this. Can you see here ciphertext1 is actually decrypted. For ciphertext1, what was used? 
initialization vector was used for generating the ciphertext one, isn't it? So for plain text one, we are giving the ciphertext to the decryption function. Now obviously decryption function or algorithm will take the key, the same key, and then the output is actually XORed with the initialization vector. Now it gives back the plain text. So C1 takes IV because P1 took IV. Now C1 takes IV. Now to generate the plain text 2, what we need? Ciphertext 2 is given as the input and ciphertext 1 is actually acting as an input here. Can you see here? So this is exactly cipher block chaining. So if you see here, the ciphertext 1 is acting as an input for generating ciphertext 2. At the same time, the ciphertext 1 is actually acting as an input for generating the plain text back. So this is exactly called the cipher block chaining operation. In all the case, the key is same. Why? Because this is a symmetric block cipher. When it is symmetric, obviously the same key is used for both encryption and decryption. We are done with understanding the cipher block chaining. Let's now analyze the pros and cons. The advantage of having this is that this mode is an appropriate mode for encrypting messages of length greater than B bits. This is obvious. If you have a lengthy message, you can break it into multiple blocks and you can go for CBC mode of operation. And not only that, since the CBC is designed in such a way that it uses an initialization vector as well, and the operation of CBC is not only providing confidentiality, but it also provides authentication because the initialization vector is known both to sender and the receiver. When a receiver receives the message, he can be 100% sure that the message is from the source only because they know what initialization vector they are using in order to undergo this process. This is about the pros and coming to the cons, the drawbacks. The first drawback is slowness because we lost the parallelism what we had in ECB. You cannot just like that go and do encryption for any block what you want. I will justify this. Suppose if you want to encrypt the plain text block P2, you certainly need C1. Because actually C1 is acting as an input for this process, I mean for converting P2 into C2, isn't it? For encrypting this block, you need previous block. For encrypting any block, obviously you need the previous block. So it's clear that you cannot go for parallelism. Let's assume you are watching a streaming video. Now just like that you cannot go and do encryption on any block because obviously you need to complete the previous block. The previous block ciphertext is actually required for encrypting the current plain text block. So obviously it is slow. That's what this point says because we lost the parallelism what we had in ECB. And coming to the second problem, you cannot encrypt any block since we need the ciphertext of the previous block. So this we have already seen. And coming to the third drawback, we need initialization vector which must be known to sender and receiver. Though you have key, but still you need initialization vector in order to do the encryption and decryption of the first block. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the security deficiencies of ECB. We have also understood the operation of CBC and we also have understood the pros and cons of CBC. I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.